light switch covers. <laughs> um, and Megan, uh, I will introduce you. If you talk, you should move up on the the little. Um, okay, I'm unmuted. Okay, great. And oh, I can't put it on speaker view. Let's see. Um, well, you can go ahead and start. I can't see you, but okay. um, oh, here we go. Let's see. There you are. Okay, so everyone, this is my wonderful daughter-in-law, Megan, and <laughs> you can go ahead and start. Great. Uh, well, hello, Evergreeners. Um, Mary, your presentation was great. I was listening to it while I was cooking dinner, and I had the pleasure of going to Vancouver a few years ago, and you did the city justice. It's a, a really beautiful place to, to visit. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, so these are light switch covers. Um, I exclusively use, exclusively use beads on them. Um, I started making these about eight years ago. The one that you see was actually given to me as a going away present um, from a coworker. Um, me and her, she was a very special lady and she gave me this light switch cover as a gift and uh, a cute little story really quick. But uh, she gave me a list of goals and achievements she had accomplished and um, wanted to pass it down. And so they were, you know, don't keep up with the Joneses and be happy and um, cute little things that she had learned. And I actually found that note uh, probably about a year ago and I emailed her and I told her which ones I would be keeping up with. And I told her I started a collection of light switch covers uh, for myself. So she was really jazzed about that. So um, that's kind of the origin story of these light switch covers. Um, and I think, uh, Kathleen, if you don't mind going forward. Okay, uh, so this is the one that Jack made. I mean, you made for Jack. Yes. So this is for yes. his uh, hobby room, which has a lot of uh, fishing, um, nature stuff. So that was kind of the uh, muse for this. Um, as you see, little bobbers and lures are um, within the light switch cover. Uh, so that one was made um, custom for Jack. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> um, okay, like I said, I use uh, beads. Um, and so they have these little nifty, you know, containers for beads or other little craft accessories um, at probably any, any hobby store, Walmart and everything. And the container itself is actually very reasonable. It's only like two to three dollars. Um, and that's, and they don't, whenever you close them, the beads don't intermix. So um, it's very handy. Can you see? Yep. Okay. So these are other supplies that you need to make one. Uh, so of course a light switch cover. I just took the ones off of the wall, um, but the ones I've made for Jack and other friends, um, you can go to again, any store and um, I think there are a few dollars to buy either the light switch one or the one that you press or the double switch. Um, and then Kathleen, do you mind going back one? Okay, uh, the other supplies that you need uh, is epoxy. Um, we'll go into more detail on that uh, later, but you do need an epoxy to have the beads stick to light switch cover. Um, and then little popsicle sticks. Um, and then washi tape is what I use. And it's just in the same section as um, any scotch tape. Um, like, again, at any craft store or Walmart or so. Okay, you can go forward. Thank you. Uh, so to begin, um, I kind of use an, an old rag to put down or an old towel, paper plate, put the light switch cover there, um, have all of my beads out and uh, my washi tape. And then you just kind of start thinking what color scheme you want, um, what kind of room you're gonna be using, um, what the paint on the wall of the room or the decor is so that you can kind of tie in your light switch cover to uh, your room. 
Okay. Uh, so the first thing that I do is use the washi tape to create a border on the light switch cover. Um, this just helps because it's really hard to get the beads on the edge of a light switch cover without them falling off. Um, and so this just kind of eliminates once you're done with your light switch cover, uh, having the white space on the edges. And so I will just frame it out with the washi tape and then just kind of, you know, bend it over into the back of the light switch cover. And then I also do the light switch uh, cover holes. Um, after I did this one, I also am going to move forward with putting washi tape over the screw holes as well. Again, this just eliminates uh, having the white space and the really, really hard to get areas of uh, your bead cover. So it kind of just helps it. And then it just, you know, it finishes it out very nicely. That's what it should look like before you start putting the beads or the epoxy or anything. Okay. Um, and this is one that I did for a friend that uh, her kindergarten class was rainbow themed. So um, rainbow themed light switch cover. And then before I put any beads on the light switch cover with the epoxy, I kind of will lay out some of the beads on the cover just to kind of get a general idea in my head of what I want, what the color scheme will look like or the design or things like that. Okay. So very important, and again, learn this after doing a few, where you go to hit the light switch all the time is a highly used area. And so I will frame out the area of where the, the, the switches are with flat beads. Um, the first one I made, I put big beads all around the light switch cover and I couldn't turn the light on and off, so um, it was useless. And so I always have to put framing beads around uh, flat beads so that they can endure a lot of touching um, and that way you are not uh, impaired on turning on your lights. Okay. Uh, yes, so this is where I probably would have wanted to put some of that washi tape. Um, as you see, I have to leave room for the screws to be able to put it on the wall. Um, and you can kind of see some white space around each screw hole. Um, putting the washi tape there would eliminate that. And then of course, once it dries, you can just flip it over and just poke the holes out so you can use the screw holes. Um, but definitely leave room for your screws so that you can put it on your wall. And you can also see uh, where I kind of framed it out for the light switch cover, where the switch is. Um, so again, very important. Around here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. These are just some that I've done, um, like for my bedroom, um, bathrooms, things like that. That's the original one that was given to me. Oh, this one? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so about your epoxy, um, I have tried at first to use a hot glue gun. Um, it's very messy and uh, eventually the beads will just pop off. Um, with epoxy, your beads are not going anywhere. I've never had a bead come off with the epoxy. With hot glue, they're gonna come off. Um, so I absolutely recommend using epoxy. You can have, um, like the one I use is this little Gorilla Glue tube where you press it down and the two mixtures come out and then you just mix them with the epoxicle stick and it creates the epoxy. Um, and that way if I um, don't need the whole container, it's, you know, it doesn't go to waste. Uh, they also have where you can buy the epoxy set it looks just big containers um, of it. Uh, so any type of epoxy that you can do self mixing so that you can use the amount that you need instead of having a big vat of it. Um, so what I'll do is I put the epoxy on a paper plate. Um, and then I think Kathleen, if you, and then you can see I have my little beads, I have my orange and the blues. So I already know the theme that I want before I start doing the epoxy. Okay, you can go ahead, thank you. But it, it's not advancing. Oh, okay. Well, that's 
<laughs> odd, no. Why would it not advance? Hmm. Um, maybe I need to stop and, re and reshare. Hold on. Let's see. Where are we? Let's see. There you are. Let me see if I can get it big now. Okay. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, it went back. Okay, perfect. Um, yep, yeah, this is just using the popsicle stick to stir the mixture. And then I will use the popsicle stick to uh, like smear on the light switch cover. Um, again, important, I do the framing part of the light switch cover first because usually you're using flat beads or small beads. And so I always will frame it out first and then I spread out from there. So with the epoxy, I will smear it on the light switch cover holes. And usually I start in the middle of them or from the sides and I only do a section at a time. Uh, the epoxy dries fairly quickly, I would say within five minutes, um, but it's still a little tacky for a while. So you can always kind of shift the beads around if you need to. Um, so it's not like it's super, super permanent right at first, um, but I do like to do sections at a time so I can kind of get the whole thing to look cohesive. Uh, so something I'll do on, um, mm -mm. oh yeah, I said that. Uh, so you'll get it on your hands. It's just going to happen. I personally have never had any issues with the epoxy material on my skin. Um, you are always welcome to wear gloves. Um, I've been the human test subject and it hasn't given me a problem, but just if it starts burning, obviously go wash it off or um, use rubbing alcohol to get it off of your hands. Um, what I like to do is I like to use my hands to kind of hit some of the smaller beads because I still have the tacky epoxy on my fingers. And that way I can kind of easily put the smaller beads into the white areas that need some coverage. So like where her little clicker is, I'm putting the beads, I'm using my fingers with the tacky to place them in there. Um, you can also use tweezers. So I've done that as well. Um, I just kind of like using my hands, um, but it's up to you. And then you let it dry, uh, takes about, uh, I let this one sit for a few hours. Most of the epoxy on the back, it'll say leave for 24 hours. It's, it gets pretty dry, I would say. I think I cut the holes out, I don't know, maybe four or five hours later and I had no problems. So again, up to you, um, but definitely let it dry before you go and cut the, uh, the holes out of it. Do you kind of cut it down the middle and then fold them back on the underside? Yep, I'll do that. But with the epoxy, because I just smeared the epoxy over the entire surface of it. Uh, usually okay. what I'll do is I'll fold it in from and then from the behind, I'll just tear it. Um, it has epoxy all over it. So it almost acts like a little plastic. It just kind of can peel off. But again, let it dry because if you don't let it dry in time, it can rip your tape. So just make sure it's dry. But, or you can cut it out, it's it's really up to you. It will not stick again on the underside if you're thinking just to fold it under and stick. Oh, it won't do that, okay. the epoxy on it makes it too heavy. Oh, okay. And there's your finished well, finished product. Uh, took me about an hour, um, you know, as I see it now, I see flaws in it. I see little white spaces that need to be uh, covered up. Um, but yeah, it's so amazing. These are the screw holes. Yes. Like there are four of them on this one because it's a double. Yep. Yep. So again, I but probably, I should have put that. tape. Go ahead. So, um, I should have probably put tape over the screw holes, but I just, as I'm learning as I go. So I would do that next time. Yeah. Okay. It took about an hour minimal so. project or materials and it's a fun little craft. Well, I, so I went to, um, I believe it was Michael's and, um, the bead section, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop the screen share.
year. The, I hadn't looked at a beans, bead section in a long time at a hobby store. And I took a picture and I forgot to put it in the PowerPoint. Um, there are astounding beads. Yeah. And I actually, yeah. it's like so many of, um, uh, we have so many young couples who are having babies right now. And I was thinking, what a cool thing. If most, most um, new parents have a theme for their nursery and you could actually do a light switch cover that would go with their theme. They, I mean, they have beads in, they have little bunny rabbits, they have cow heads, they have, I mean, anything you can think yep. of, they have in a bead. If you are going to do, uh, if you are going to do a baby or a kid's room, like make sure you use the epoxy because the hot glue, if the beads come off, it could be a choking hazard. So just make sure if you're using epoxy, if you're using for a kid's room. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I've just thought of, you know, what a lovely personalized gift to uh, make for somebody. And I think, I mean, our family loves to do crafts together, you know, whether they're gingerbread houses or this, it's just something fun to be together and doing and chatting. And um, then you end up with something when you leave. So, um, uh, so I'm actually, a lot of my friends don't know this yet, but you know, next time they come over for dinner, they're going to make light switch covers <laughs> and take them home. Um, so anyway, I just think it's a lot of fun. And um, every time I pass by the one Megan made for Jack, it's just like this little hug because she made that for us with love and it's just it you just it's a little gentle fun reminder so um i would encourage anyone else to um think about making them we do have a bunch of questions i, I do have, I, kathleen i have a, a technical visual question for megan <laughs> have you ever used the light switch covers that don't have the screws on the surface i have not but um Looks like you just, more uh, you, you, surf you series just, to with. Yeah, you just wait. Um, these will be waiting when we come over to do them at our house because <laughs> you, you have a back plate that does have the screws and that other piece snaps onto it. Ooh, I might so, have to look into that. Yeah, so these are at, at uh, Lowe's and Home Depot. So. Uh, let's see. Oh, David said very original and very creative and anyone from three to 65, I'd say 95 <laughs> could do it. Um, <laughs> let's not limit things. Um, <laughs> but yes, true. And to me, that's one of the real positives about it is that, you know, you can do it. Any, anyone can do 